In Risa 3D, users have the ability to easily review both analytical and design-related results. With the click of a button, users can show color-coded results, deflections, and contour plots for any load combination on the entire model, with additional result information available in corresponding spreadsheets. Now once I've actually added my physical load, I can go into my load combinations to create load combinations for the model. Now in this case, I already have some load combinations created based on the codes. Um, so I chose to use the IBC ASD code. We could go ahead and choose the load combination generated to generate those load combinations if we wish. And we can also choose which combinations we want to solve in this case. In this case, it's a small model. I'm just going to choose to run and solve all 15 of these load combinations. And so to do that, right from this interface, I'm going to go ahead and click Solve Batch Plus Envelope. Once the solution is complete, we can go ahead and review the different results in spreadsheet form and also graphically. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the warning log and also close out of our node reactions and our load combination spreadsheet here. And we can go ahead and start to look at the loads. The first thing I want to look at though is we on the view tab here, you can see that we have the ability to look at different loads graphically. So we can switch really quickly between them using these drop downs. So if I switch here to dead load, we can see all the dead load applied. The other thing I wanted to show here is once we've run the analysis, our area loads are broken down into what we call transient loads. Basically, if we look at the dead load now, it's broken down into a bunch of line loads. Basically, it now creates that area load and goes to the line loads based on the tributary distance and the load distribution direction. We can also go ahead and look at the transient loads created for the snow load on our low roof. And so we have the distribution for those two different types of loads. Additionally, it's important to note that tension and compression only members, as well as vertical brace and horizontal brace members will not receive any load during the area load attribution. Now, if I go ahead and turn off the loads, the first thing I want to look at is deflections. So I can say, I can show the deflection with an undeflected shadow or with the deflected shadow. I'm going to choose without. And so we can see our deflection here. Now, the deflection is based on uh, scaling. So if I go ahead into our view tab and click view results, I can go change the scaling of our deflection. So we'll choose maybe just to scale it four times the actual deflection. I could also choose to animate the deflection so I can animate this result. So I can just choose this particular load combination and I can choose any load combination that I want. And I can also tweak the way that this animates. So again, I'm going to go ahead and change the scale and maybe increase the animation speed. And so we can see um, how that animation would show the deflection in our model. Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and export this animation and save it as a video. Now let's go ahead and turn off the deflected shape. And along with deflections goes our node deflection spreadsheet and also our member deflection spreadsheet. So if I open both of those spreadsheets from the Explorer panel over here, we can see the envelope results for both of those. Now we can see the results spreadsheet. Now at any time, if I wanted to see the maximum deflections, maybe I wanted to see what the max deflection in, let's say, the X direction was. I can go ahead and select this, right click, choose sort and an absolute max to min. And so this is going to give us absolute max and min uh, deflections at, an, at a specific node. In addition to deflections, I can go ahead and look at node reactions in a spreadsheet. So here we have our node reaction spreadsheet. And in the same way, I can go ahead and sort to see, okay, what's the worst case vertical reaction I have? So I have 66 kips at my wall panel too. Now I can also look at these same results graphically. So if I go back to the home tab, I have our quick view buttons. I could go ahead and turn on, let's say, the Y direction loads on this um, on the model. Now, with those loads, I also need to use our load combination toggle. So I can go ahead and select a specific load combination to see the different results for different load combinations. We can also go ahead and turn on member forces. So let's go ahead and look at the moment. And we'll go ahead and turn off the node reactions. Now, when we have the moment on, in this case, we have the moment diagrams. So we don't have any magnitudes. So I'm going to go back to the view here and choose results. And under members, I'm just going to flip on magnitudes and click apply. And so now we can see the magnitudes of all of those different moments that we have on those beams. We can also look at these same forces in a spreadsheet. So if I go up to the results tab, I can choose either an envelope based or a load combination based spreadsheet. So if I choose envelope, I can say I want to look at maybe member forces in this case, right? So I can see the member forces by member 
for the worst case for axial shear, torque, moment, etc. So we have all of these, including different maximums and also the end reaction. So if you wanted to give this information really quickly to a connection designer, you could do that. Next, we can go ahead and look at our plate forces. So I'm gonna go back to our home tab again. Let's turn off our member forces and let's turn on our plate forces. So let's just turn on maybe a von Mies stress in this case. So we have a von Mies stress is reported in KSI. We can also look at that same plate stress or those same plate stresses in a table as well. So if we expand this table, we can see all the different forces at different plate labels for the different values. And so we can see those same results in spreadsheet form. Finally, let's go ahead and look at the wall panel forces. So if I'm back to the home tab, if I wanna take my view back to my its original state, I can go ahead and click the reset view button and then choose wall panel. And let's look at the in-plane force in my wall panels. So we can have our in-plane wall panel forces here. So we can see our wall panel forces um, in the walls. We can also see the legend and this legend is available for any plate or any wall panel forces. So I'm also gonna go ahead and use our select element by properties tool to enable only the wall panels. So I wanna select only these wall panels. And then we'll go ahead and lock the selection. And if we go to the results tab here, we can also use a tool called internal force summation tools. So we have an internal force summation tool that works anywhere on the model, but we also have one that's specific to walls. So if I go ahead and click on the wall internal force summation tool, you can see that the mesh of the wall is automatically presented. And so I can select a mesh node and then another mesh node and we'll get a dialogue that'll give us the summation. Basically by clicking two points, it defines the cutting line and then gives us a sum of forces between those two points only in that specific wall. So it's really nice to look at these results maybe in a pier or we need to look at results for maybe where a lintel is gonna be or something like that. So to be able to take these contour forces and look at them uh, very specifically so that we can do our design. For more information about reviewing analytical and design related results in Risa 3D, visit risa.com.